<laughs> this, this isn't a creepypasta, okay? I know that this is going to seem like a strange thing for my channel, and I am definitely not trying to make money off of the grief of others. I'm speaking from a personal experience, because I need to make it as clear as possible that no matter how kind, friendly, or intelligent somebody can be, you never really know who's a monster underneath. And today I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. You see, a long time ago, well, seven years ago, I think, it sounds right. I had a friend. His name was David. I met him in 10th grade, and I don't really remember when we started talking. But back then, I was kinda into Stargate SG-1. Uh, apparently, so was he. And that's how he and I got to talking about it. Turns out we actually had a lot in common. A similar sense of humor, a similar... Interest in Transformers and sci-fi and stuff in general. And it was interesting to actually talk to somebody who understood the kind of stuff that I was into. It was nice. I had trouble making friends, and to this day I still have trouble, but that's not what this is about. This is about David. And kind of about me. We never became super close. But I liked his smile... He was tall, and he was kind of attractive, at least to me, I guess. And he was really smart. Even though we were in the same assisted learning classes, he was smart. You could just tell when talking to him that there was so much going on inside of his head. He and I would talk from time to time, because, like I said, while we were friends, we weren't super close. Even though I found him attractive, he had a girlfriend, so I just backed the fuck off when... I learned that. Even then, we were still friends. He was quiet. He was funny. He listened to what I had to say. Also, he was great with hugs. I never even had to ask. It was like he knew that I needed one. It was nice to have somebody who would hug me without pulling away after a few seconds. Anyway, the school I went to had a technology building in the back. Uh, it was mostly for teaching things like building, welding, cooking. Skills, that's it. The word I'm looking for is skills. Specialty stuff. Things that paid you well because you worked with your hands. I took welding. I never really got back into it, but that's another story for another time. And David took cooking. Oh my god, you have no idea how cool it was to come back inside from being in a hot room full of welders and hot stuff and metal and bullshit and yelling. And, hey look, your friend has food for you. He even set aside a portion of that teriyaki chicken he made. Because he's awesome. And it was like this every time that we had class. I would weld, he would cook. I even remember this one guy who said that when he got famous as a rock star, I'm not even kidding, he would hire David as his personal chef. I could totally see it. David was a great cook. Now, in the classes that we took, mostly English class, now in English class we had to do out loud reading. One day, I forgot my book at home. That can get you a zero for the day because our teacher was an asshole. David, carefully, under the desk, handed me his book. He handed me his book after he was done reading and the teacher had been distracted. So there I am reading from his book, and then when my turn was over, I slid the book back to him under the desk. After class, he told me that he was surprised that I forgot my book, and that he liked hearing me talk. He liked it when I read out loud. So, here comes the bad part. You see, in March of 2009, I got sick for a while, 
and missed a couple of days. And when I got back, everything felt different. David was not in class. And when I asked about what was happening, and when I asked about where David might have been, well, no one would really tell me, because why would they? I was an outcast. Me talking to anybody was kind of weird. And when I asked teachers, they told me they weren't allowed to talk about it. But I knew it had to do with David. Well, I eventually talked to somebody who knew what was going on, and... I want you to take into account what I've told you. What do you think the worst David could do could be? Running a red light, maybe? Getting a DUI? Maybe an assault charge, but nothing... No, nothing like what he actually did. It's not fun to talk about, but it's been a few years, and I think it's... I think it's important that I talk about it, because it messed with a lot of people, what David did. On the evening of March 20th, 2009, a babysitter took the two children she was babysitting to a local park. Uh, the younger child had to use the bathroom, so the sitter took him home so he could pee, and left the older child, a seven-year-old girl, alone. When the sitter came back, the girl was missing. She looked for the girl, and when she found her, the girl explained to the babysitter that a man had asked her for help doing something, lured her away from the park, took her into his house, and raped her. David had raped a seven-year-old girl. This is not something you usually find on my channel. And seven years after the fact, why am I talking about it? Because I've been thinking a lot lately. About how people can fool you. Sometimes you think you know somebody, and then they do something that you really didn't expect. Sometimes you can think that someone is a good person, and then find out that they've done something absolutely abhorrent, twisted, disgusting. He raped a little girl. There's nothing to excuse his actions. I threw up when I heard about it. What I am saying is, no matter how well you think you know some people, you're never ready for the monster underneath. I'm just asking you to be aware. These people do exist. And a lot of the time, they're a lot closer than you would think.